Chakrasite enrichment, secondary chakrasite. Can you have it with pyrite? It will re replace totally calcopyrite or sphalerite of course. before it gets into the pyrite. pyrite. So it's possible to have the two coexisting, very, very but then common. it's got to be it's got to be supergene calcite. You're not going to get a crystalline, um, hypogene appearance calcite. Well, I mean, you've got this issue of this high cuisine enrichment at the base of, the base of the lithocaps. And, and if you just look at a sample, almost indistinguishable. So, I mean, that, that's a serious, it's a serious issue. Especially when, when, when you're at shallow levels. I mean, I mean, if you're looking at a deep system, you know, which is hundreds of meters below the surface, then, then there's no argument, of course, because you know there's no supergene. Effect at all, but, but it can be tricky when I mean this is the case. It's still not resolved that you, what's what's really supergene and what's hydrogen. We know there's both, but to be actually say that's but, but it's down that is because at Kanan there is supergene compensate down there. I can follow along the structure, so I know absolutely that it is supergene down seven or eight hundred meters. Yeah. No, that's below right. the present surface, yeah. not paleocentric. God knows what that was. Yeah. Below yeah. the present surface. Yeah. See the drill holes going down there, almost a kilometer down. Yeah. No, and no, it's super right. yeah. But is it yeah. uh, is it sooty chalcosite? Yeah. It is very clearly distinguishable sooty. Well, but this is to... what he's talking about. There's there's a huge gray area here. I mean, one person sooty is somebody else's. <coughs> All I would say is that it's definitely a rim, a textural rim of calcosite on pyrite. So at least the timing relative to pyrite is clear. The timing relative to supergene, i.e. modern weathering, or later weathering versus hypergene, that's a tough one. Yeah, you've got to bring all the thing, other things into play, really, to, to, to crack that. It's very difficult just to know how uh, the, the hypergene story is sometimes... <coughs> You can discriminate because there is an association of copper sulfide plus boron plus energy. Hmm. When you, when you know, if that's the case, it becomes a bit more easy. But it's often so difficult to recognize those in ounce so, so fine grained, black mm -hmm. coating around the bottom. And if you say that, what does the average punter, what, what chance does the average punter have to recognize that? Well, I've just been looking at something now, the last, last, last couple of days, which, which is under a thousand, a thousand meters of cover, so with exactly this. But I mean, under a thousand meters of cover, you know, the oxidation is about 30 meters at the top. And then you go down, you know, basically a thousand meters. And, um, and this stuff's down there at uh, yeah. 19 meter drill holes. So, what possible economic target is there at 1900 meters? Well, that's, that's, a, that's a very good question. I mean, I get this competition all the time with clients. They're saying, well, you know, you're drilling here, and I can certainly describe for you the possibilities of there being something there, but let's yeah. revisit economics. Yeah. If there's something there whose top is at 800 meters, I mean, what sort of grade do you have to have for this to be economic? Yeah. Certainly one and a half percent, that's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. At, at, the, at, the, at the very least. Well, that's right. I mean, it isn't just it isn't just the, the, the metallurgy that might be wrong. The thing, you, you, you know, you've developed a, a the mechanics of huge lead time on, on these, you know, the, the, these big panel block caves. Yeah. And, and then it doesn't work. If the stoke doesn't come in, you're in trouble. Yeah. Well, I, well, I remember, you know, when Sarah de Pasco Corp went it into Rio Lanco in, uh, I guess, 68. And that was going to be a blockade, and they undercut it, it nothing happened. They did some more inducement, nothing happened. And finally they put these, these, these explosive charges in there, and it blew the top of the mountain. Oh God, God, God. Oh, came right through to the surface. That's really what it was. As I, as I understand it, you know, when you when you get to about a kilometre of cover, you've got to undercut those those blocks. Whether you use whether it's a conventional block cave or a panel cave, you've got to undercut. And and the openings close as fast as you as, as you produce them. So you know you 
you can't operate on, underneath the coral rock that you want to cave because you, you're talking about six or seven hundred meter ver vertical intervals that you're going to bring down. Well, some of these caving guys reckon they all that's just going to close up the undercuts, and you know you, you, you don't have time to to, so to get the stuff out. Yeah. That's so fast. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, are we talking now about these things being steel lined? And, you know, it's it's going to be very interesting to to, to see whether it, whether it actually functions. Or not. But it's it's going to it's going to if he's filming, I'm not going to say anything.